Now today we're tackling a ball joint on really most Acura and Honda vehicles. So the first portion of this video is removing the entire assembly, placing it on the bench. And then the second portion is removing the ball joint while everything is in front of us. Now if you want to fast forward and just see that portion on how to remove the ball joint, I'll include the time mark in the description box below if you don't want to waste your time. In a case like this, this vehicle is 16 years old, lives in the Northeast United States, really nasty winter weather throughout the year. And after 16 years, sometimes these bolts can be pretty nasty to remove. You don't want them to break. So just soak everything down with some penetrating oil. So let's start by removing the caliper. And that's just this bottom bolt right here. And what you can do is just give it a quick tap with a heavy hammer. And that's it. And sometimes you'll find a bracket for the brake hose. This flips up. And then you have the caliper bracket, which is held in. Typically there's 17 or 19 millimeter bolts, one there, another one right there. Okay, again. Good solid three, four pound hammer. Big help. Okay, now Honda is known to use these flip type screws in the rotors, or in their rotors, I should say. A lot of manufacturers use them today. What you can use is a hand impact set because they're really, really tight. They can seize on. This makes the job so easy. Here we go. So as you can see, we're very lucky. This rotor comes off without a problem, which doesn't happen very often, especially if you live in a, uh, in a winter climate. So what you could do, you have two six millimeter ends. Many rotors have these six millimeter ends. And all that you do is you go to your local auto parts store, you go to Home Depot, Lowe's, so on and so forth, and grab two screws that are, you want machined, not threaded, machined six millimeter machined ends and all that you do is you just slowly turn the screw here and as you turn it it will strike the hub and push off the road now we need to remove the axle nut from the axle and as you can see there's a little dimple we just need to push back that dimple and remove the axle nut now there's two ways to remove these they're very tight in this case it's 180 foot pounds from the factory option one is you can use an impact cordless gun that's what I'm going to use option two is if you don't have one of those before you remove the rotor and the brake pads, have someone press on the brake hard and then use a breaker bar and back out this axle nut, okay? The key is use a breaker bar. Without a breaker bar, these are really, really hard to remove. So now I just want to start removing anything that's attached to this knuckle. So right here we have a metal brace for the brake line, or the ABS line I should say. Now I'm going to deal with the upper, that's up here, the upper ball joint and the lower ball joint. It can be a little tricky sometimes, but there we go, okay. And then this happens to be a 17 millimeter. They're usually not very tight. Now two options you have to remove this from the upper mount. Number one is you can use a three pound hammer, strike it very, very hard, eventually it will pop out. Option two is you can use a service set. This is a lot easier. In my opinion, you can rent these, you can buy one for maybe around 50, 55 bucks. Just make sure you push up the boot. Let me give you a closer view here. Okay, so you push up the boot around the adapter. And then, slowly turn this. And there you go. Now this is, that was quite easy. Let's do the lower ball joint. Typically it's a, lot, a little bit harder than that, but that's all. It makes it really, really easy using a service set. So now we need to remove the steering tie rod. Again, cotter pin. I just hit my first roadblock. As you can see, the cotter pin completely snapped off on the front, also on the back. So we'll need to drill this out. And then on the bottom here, this is a 17 millimeter. And as before, you can hit right here with the heavy hammer. You don't hit the tie rod itself. 
you want to hit the housing or you can use one of these service tools just make sure you're careful with the boot and just check on the other end and you can also use a tool like this for a tie rod end and there you go so we have the upper ball joint the tie rod end and then we just have the lower ball joint and we are home where is it there it is then we're home free and for this I'm just using a breaker bar just to break it loose there we go and one last time using the service tool again okay So now I have the upper ball joint, the lower ball joint removed. Push back the axle here. And there you go. Okay. So we have a small ring that lives on the rear of the knuckle. Just a flat head. You can even use a pry bar. And there's an opening where the ABS sensor lives. Where safety glasses, sometimes this can pop up and hit you in the face. Whoops, okay. Now this is probably the toughest part of the entire job, removing the old ball joint from the knuckle. Now, before we do that, I highly recommend you visit the, the local parts store and rent a ball joint service kit. These are fantastic, makes the job easier, but most of these kits do not have adapters. Unfortunately, that will work removing the ball joint on a Honda and Acura. So we have to do this the old fashioned way. A good trusty three, four pound hammer, a large enough socket, and just go to town on it. Now, before we do that, there's a collar right here that's holding on the dust boot. So we, we will remove the collar, remove the dust boot. So this is just, let me make sure you can see this, a flat head, insert it in here. Wear your safety glasses, of course, okay. Let's get this out of the way. No big deal. Ah, that hurt. This comes off. I have a 1 by 24 inch pipe, and this fits perfect. Just like this. So, if you want to get one of these, this is from Home Depot. I've had it for at least a decade. Now I can really go to town on this and hit it from this end. And now we have the ball joint out. This took a good 40 minutes to remove. So if you can get the adapter beforehand, perfect. Otherwise, it does take a lot of muscle to get this out. We can now clean everything up. New ball joint, some grease. Now sometimes looking at these kits can be very, very daunting. And the instructions are almost in ancient Greek. Very, very difficult to follow. Just use common sense. So obviously we need the main tool itself. And if you take a look, there's a threaded end, okay? The other end is not threaded. So obviously that's where we take our threaded section of the tool, insert it. Okay, so this is ready to rock and roll. Now, we need to find the adapter. This is a receiving tube adapter. In other words, you want something Make sure you guys can see this, okay? Two jobs for this adapter. Number one, it has to be large enough to fit precisely on the knuckle. In other words, if it was too small, you don't want that, and you, you don't want anything too big. So this is a good size, and it can receive the ball joint, okay? So this will f sit on the bottom. And if you look, you have two adapters that look almost identical, but they are slightly different. You want to find the adapter that fits into this section, okay? So, let's see. I don't know which one. There we go. So, so this is perfect. You see how this fits right in here? Let me turn on the light. 
fits right in here. Okay, so this will go right here. Adapter, receiving tube, I should say, will go right here, and that fits. You'll see in a moment. Now, on the top, obviously, is the other side of the adapter. Just like that. Fits, oops, sorry about that. So, fits real nice. And, ball joint. Okay? Grab the new ball joint and insert it into the knuckle as straight as possible. Okay? So here we go, adapter, and I'll take this real slow. You don't want to just zap it in. Nice and slow because you do not want to mess this up. Okay, make this nice and centered. Okay, here we go. All right. Just want to make sure the adapter is not striking the boot. Everything looks great, so we can wrap it up. Okay, let's grab a flashlight. Make sure that everything looks great. No rips or tears. Okay. Now at this point, many of you can simply reinstall everything without any further help. For those of you that want to know the torque specs, how to simply put everything back together and so forth, or you simply just want to continue watching, I will add that in right after this. Regarding the ring that sits in the knuckle, I will clean this off with a wire, wire brush, reinstall it, and we will keep on going. So for those of you that are taking off, as always, thank you for watching. For those of you that will continue watching, here we go. Now regarding the ring, make sure that the opening is where the ABS sensor fits into the knuckle. Lightly tap it. Okay. Okay, axle's lined up, lower ball joint. A little tricky here. There we go. So now, I'm just placing or loading up the suspension here before we torque everything down. Now the lower ball joint is 65 foot-pounds. Okay. The tie rod is 40 foot-pounds. Now the last step is just tightening down the axle nut. This is 181 foot-pounds. So I'm going to call it a night, guys. Last thing, put on the wheel. Check the vehicle down, take it for a test drive, and that's it. Uh, but it's really late, so as always, thank you so much for watching.